A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to Hindu Newspaper Analysis brought to you by Shankar A's Academy for the date 17th of September 2022. Displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss today. Without any delay, let's get into the article discussion. We are going to start today's discussion with this article here. See the article reports that the shortage of teachers in the Ekalavya model schools. It also says that 70% of the teachers who are currently teaching in these schools are brought in through deputation or contract. So this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, we are going to see in detail about Ekalavya schools, objective of their functioning and also about their administrative structure. I have also provided the syllabus related to this discussion. Please go through it. First of all, let us see what are these Ekalavya schools. See, these Ekalavya schools, they are residential schools run by the Indian government. See, Indian government runs a lot of schools. So, what is so special about this? See, these schools, they have specialized curriculum to cater to the specific needs of the tribal students. So, this is what makes these Ekalavya schools stand unique among the other government-run schools. Now, coming to the objective, what do you think will be the objective of these schools? See, we all know tribal people, they live in the remote areas of the country. So, the main objective is to impart quality education to the tribal students in the remote areas of the country. Why do you think this should be done? See, this should be done to enable them to avail professional educational courses and get employment in the various sectors. So, what are these schools doing? See, these schools, they are providing education for improving the livelihood of tribal students. And also know that special focus is given to all-round development of the tribal students. See, this particular scheme, that is, the establishment of Ekalavya schools, they are started in the year 1997. And today, 1 lakh tribal students are studying in 372 schools across the country. Now, you may wonder, how are these schools functioning? See, the grants for the development of infrastructure of these schools are provided by central government. And these grants, they are provided under the mandate of Article 275 of the Indian Constitution. As a UPSC aspirant, we should know about this article also, right? So, going by the logic, we are going to see what is Article 275. See, this article provides for preferential treatment of certain states over the others for receiving additional grants from the center. So, this Article 275 is the reason certain states are receiving additional grants when compared to other states. And why is this provision added in the Indian Constitution? See, the states with the tribal population and the states containing scheduled areas are entitled to additional revenue to further the development of the tribes. And that is why these additional grants are provided. See, we are discussing this article here because you can quote this article in your main's answer to the questions relating to constitutional safeguards for the tribals. In our 15th September 2022 Hindu News Analysis, Balaji Sir discussed about the constitutional provisions or safeguards for the scheduled tribes, right? You can add this article also in that constitutional safeguards for scheduled tribes. We are ending the detour here. Now coming back to the administrative setup of these schools. See, these schools, they function under an apex body. And this apex body is called National Education Society for Tribal Students. See, shortly referred as NESTS. And this apex body is functioning under the Ministry of Tribal Affairs, obviously, right? See, here, note that there is again a parallel body in the states. And what is the body is called? It is called as State Education Society for Tribal Students, shortly referred as SESTS. And what do these two bodies do? See, NESTS, they provide broader framework for the functioning of Ekalavya schools. While the SESTS, which is the state body, they try to incorporate regional variations into the functioning of Ekalavya schools. And this is all with respect to the administrative setup of the schools. Here, note that these Ekalavya schools, they have specific center of excellence for sports. 
See India, when compared to other countries like USA, China, we are getting lesser medals. So India wants to move to the top of the Olympic ladder. So with this vision in mind, India strives to nurture the talents from every part of the country. And here the Center of Excellence for Sports also tries to do the same. Through this initiative, tribal students are also provided with additional opportunities to develop themselves apart from the academics. So these are the two objectives of the specific Center of Excellence for Sports. So that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw about Eklavya schools, their objective. And after that, we took a small detour and saw what is Article 275. And finally, we saw about the administrative setup of the schools and the center of excellence for sports. Now, with these key learned points, let us move on to the next article discussion. Now, we are going to take this lead editorial article for our discussion. See, this editorial article focuses on declining fertility rates. The editorial focuses on why the fertility rate is dropping down and what are all the advantages of the declining fertility rate. And it also covers the disadvantages of falling fertility rates. And finally, it talks about how the issues caused by the falling fertility rates can be addressed. So this is the essence of the editorial. And we are also going to focus on these things in this particular article discussion. But before getting into the article, I have highlighted here the syllabus relevant to this discussion. If you see the prelims syllabus, the word demographics is specifically mentioned. And what we are about to discuss in this discussion is useful for your prelims. And in the mains examination also, particularly in the GS Paper 1 syllabus, you can find the words population and associated issues. And what we are going to discuss is exactly that. So what is evident here? This discussion, it will be useful for your prelims as well as your mains examination. Now having seen the relevance of the discussion, let us start with the basics. First of all, what is total fertility rate? We all know it is shortly referred as TFR. But what does the rate mean? See, the rate refers to the total number of children born or likely to be born during a woman's lifetime. So that is what total fertility rate is. Now next, we are going to see the natural replacement rate or the replacement level of fertility. See, a country is said to have achieved natural replacement rate or replacement level of fertility when the population exactly replaces itself from one generation to the next without migration. See, in simple words, it means that if a particular generation can give birth to children who can replace them, then it is said that a country has achieved natural replacement rate or replacement level of fertility. Know that when the total fertility rate reaches roughly 2.1, then the population starts replacing itself. And that is why TFR rate of 2.1 is called as replacement level of fertility. Now you should know what happens when TFR rate falls below 2.1. When the TFR falls below 2.1, a particular generation is not producing enough children to replace itself. That is, since the couples are having less children, there are less number of children to replace their parents. And when this happens, the population of the country starts falling. I hope you have a general idea about what is total fertility rate and what is replacement level of fertility. Now moving on to the third important term that you should know before getting into the article is the demographic dividend. Now what is demographic dividend? We have heard it so many times. But still, there is a confusion about what it is, right? Don't worry, I'm going to explain it to you. See, basically, demographic dividend refers to increased economic growth when the population structure changes. What is dividend? It is profit, returns, right? And what is demography? It indicates population. So, the economic growth or the profit that a country experiences when its population structure changes is called demographic dividend. Now you may ask yourself a question. How come the change in the population structure result in economic growth? See, when the population structure changes such that 
there are more people in the working age population then the country will obviously experience economic growth right and that is how it is related and this economic growth because of the population structure change is called as demographic dividend i hope you understand clearly now i'm going to give you an additional information here who constitute working age population the people between the ages of 15 and 65 remember this fact you can use it in your mains answer see these basics they'll help you understand the content given in the editorial better and that's why i discussed all these important terms now let us entirely focus on the editorial see there are some population related facts given in the editorial and these legitimate facts can be used in the introduction of your mains answer don't forget to take note of it the first fact is that the average global tfr that is the total fertility rate it has been consistently falling for the past 70 years See the global TFR was 5 in the year 1951 but by the year 2020 it has reduced to 2.4 see the reduction right it has reduced from 5 to 2.4 and this data is according to world population prospects 2022 now you know why i stated this fact here this is a very relevant fact and if a mains question is asked related to population then you can quote this fact there and know that the world population prospects it is released once every 2 years by the population division of united nations so we learned who is releasing world population prospects also now moving on to the next useful fact see the developing countries and the newly developed countries they are reducing the tfr at a faster rate than the older developed countries see this is a fascinating fact right See the article provides the examples of Britain and South Korea to substantiate this fact. Let us see what they are. Britain took 130 years to reduce its TFR from 5 per woman in the year 1800 to 2 in 1930. But in the case of South Korea, the country just took 20 years, that is from 1965 to 1985 to reduce the TFR from 5 to and this is one fact and the last major fact is that post 2050 most of the global population growth will be the result of population growth in the sub saharan africa remember these three crucial facts i'm telling you again and again you can use these facts in your mains answer now apart from this the editorial also gives us data from the national family health survey fi according to nfhs fi In the year 2021, the TFR for India as a whole has reached two, and almost all the states in our country have reached the replacement level of fertility or even lower. But there is an exception here: five states have TFR greater than 2.1. What are those states? They are Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Jharkhand, Manipur, and Meghalaya. See, these are some useful facts relevant to the examination. Now let us see the reasons for falling TFR in our country. The first and foremost reason is the increased use of contraception. See due to persistent government campaigning the taboo and the fear around the use of contraception has reduced. And this is one of the reasons for reducing TFR. Now the second reason is the better health care. See in the previous generation people used to have more kids because of the fear what fear do they have see some of them may die due to low availability of health care and some of them may die because of some unprecedented diseases right but now that is not the condition we have better health care and this serves as a reason for the falling tfr now moving on to the third reason the third reason is education see both women and men they are more educated now and due to this factor they are increasingly aware of the ill effects of having more kids and the fourth reason is there is an increase in the mean marriage age of women what does this mean this means that women are getting married late see this is because women are getting educated and they are increasingly participating in our country's labor force and as a result of this they are getting married late 
and this late marriage results in reduction of child bearing years you all know what is child bearing years right see a woman who is getting married at the age of 21 has more child bearing years than the woman who is getting married at the age of 35 so this increase in the mean marriage age of women results in reducing tfr and this is one reason finally the reason for the falling tfr is capitalism see post 1991 lpg reforms the cost of raising a child has increased and also previously that is pre 1991 reforms people used to have more children because they saw the children as labor force can you guess why exactly pre 1991 the dominant sector in india was agriculture so more children means more hands to work in the fields but after 1991 agriculture has lost significance comparatively so having less children now was actually an economic decision made by the parents so these are the reasons for falling tfr what are they the first one is increased use of contraception the second one is better health care the third one is education the fourth one is increase in the mean marriage age of women and the fifth one is capitalism now with this reasoning we are going to see the advantages of reducing tfr you just guess what will be the advantages of reducing tfr don't worry we will also be discussing the advantages of reducing tfr but i want you to guess you have to inculcate the habit of guessing so that it will be easy for you to write your mains answer in the examination hall so pause the video and guess and after that see whether you have covered all the advantages by seeing the video now the first advantage is that the falling tfr will also lead to lower pressure on land water and other resources this is a basic advantage right if population is reducing then the pressure on nature will also reduce and ultimately this will help us in achieving environmental goals and the second advantage is women empowerment see with lower tfr women are increasingly participating in the labor force and they are also getting more education see this is a beneficial cycle how this is a cycle see women are getting educated and as a result of this tfr is falling and tfr is falling as women are getting more educated so this is the second advantage and finally the reducing tfr will result in increasing income see with tfr falling the population will also come down this is a basic relation but due to this supply of labor in the economy will also come down have you thought about this angle we have been talking about population alone but decrease in population means decrease in supply of labor in the economy and when this scenario happens people can negotiate better wages with their employers so this is the economic angle of advantages of reducing tfr so in these three advantages we have covered three different perspectives right the first one is environment perspective and the second one is social perspective and the third one is economic perspective see even if you write three points you have to write in different perspectives like this it will fetch you more marks in your mains answer now moving on see like the advantages there are also some disadvantages of falling tfr we are going to discuss that only now the first one is regarding the productivity see the productivity in the economy will come down we'll see how currently india is having most of the population in the working age group do you remember what is the working age group yes it is between 15 to 65 age but if the tfr keeps on falling in 20 to 30 years these people will get old and after getting old they cannot contribute significantly to the society and in addition to this if tfr is low the number of people added to the workforce will also be low and due to all of these factors productivity will come down this is the first issue the second one is inflation see while discussing the advantages of low tfr we discussed about increase in income right what happens when income increases 
we tend to spend a lot this means that money supply in the economy will increase here try to recall our previous inflation discussions when the money supply in the economy increases inflation will increase so this is the second issue the third one is the dependency ratio will also increase what is dependency people expecting other persons help and living so what portion of population expects other people's help it is the group of children and the old age people right see with tfr declining and the life expectancy of people increasing the number of people above the age group of 65 also increases as i already said the dependent population includes people below the age of 15 and people above the age of 65 and the dependency ratio it is nothing but the sum number of children below age 15 and senior citizens above the age of 65 divided by the number of people in the age group of 15 to 65 so when this number increases the dependency ratio will also increase and due to this situation government social security expenditure will also increase and how will the government fund the additional social security expenditure it will fund this by increasing the tax on working age population see this measure in the long term it will be unsustainable and this is one of the issues of reducing tfr and finally the investments will come down think how investments will come down due to decreasing tfr i'll tell you how data shows that by 2100 40% of the global population will be above the age of 65 and people tend to spend less when they get old right imagine will your grandfather spend money on playstation no right So obviously they tend to spend less while compared to younger population as the old age population increases there won't be any buyers in the economy when there is no buyer the industry will not produce any products as they cannot sell their products in the market so as a result of this they will reduce their investment in the economy when the investment made by the industries comes down then the employment generation will also come down so there is two issue here and this leads to reduction in economic growth and these are the major issues that will rise due to falling tfr see don't worry that india is going to go through all of these japan has already gone through this see japan was the first country to experience the impacts of falling fertility rates see due to falling tfr japan has been experiencing new zero gdp growth since 1990s and due to the increasing dependency ratio japan is facing fiscal challenges to meet the rising social security cost am i adding to your fear don't worry the editorial mentions some of the measures to address this situation the first one is encouraging more women to join the workforce as of 2020 female labor force participation in india was 22.8 percentage think about this if more women are encouraged to join the workforce the increase in dependency ratio can be addressed and the second measure is that training can be provided to people above 65 and why this should be done see this can be done to increase their productivity what is the result of this measure see this will help the senior citizens become productive members of the society and this will reduce the social security spending of the country now apart from this migration can be liberalized see we already saw that after 2050 sub saharan africa will be the major contributor to global population when migration is liberalized people will go from population surplus area to population deficit area so this is one of the measures mentioned in the article and the next one is labor laws can be liberalized when people are provided with more parental leave and maternity associated benefits they will tend to have more children in this aspect germany has made some progress and finally government support can also be provided here the article mentions the example of russia russia is providing one time payment of government support close to 13 lakh rupees 
for women who bore and raised more than 10 children so these are the steps that are mentioned in the editorial that are to be taken to address the fall in tfr and with this we have also come to the end of this particular article discussion in this article discussion we discussed about some basic terms like total fertility rate natural replacement rate and demographic dividend and after that we saw some facts mentioned in world population prospects and in national family health survey 5 and after that we saw the reasons for falling tfr advantages of falling tfr disadvantages of falling tfr and finally some of the measures to address the falling tfr with these points in mind let us move on to the next article discussion take a look at this final article here this article says that the indian air force is trying to use 10 percentage blended biofuel in its transport carrier an32 and it also says that in its dornier aircraft ground trials have been going on for the use of 50 percentage blended biofuel so this is the crux of the news article given here In this backdrop let's learn about biofuels and also about the different generations of it. First of all let us see what is biofuel. By seeing the name itself you would have guessed it right. See biofuel is a fuel that is produced from organic matter hence the name biofuel. Now you may ask even fossil fuels are also produced from organic matter right? So what is the difference? here these fuel that is the biofuel it is produced over a short span of time when compared to the conventional fossil fuels see we all know formation of fossil fuels takes thousands of years but that's not the case when it comes to the production of biofuel so this is a brief about what is biofuel now coming to examples see examples of biofuel include biodiesel bioethanol biogas etc now you may ask what is the hype about this biofuel as we all know everywhere people are transforming to greener energy since biofuels emit less carbon dioxide than the conventional fossil fuels they have a lot of significances in the present world see they can be blended with existing fuels as an effective way of reducing carbon dioxide emissions in the transport sector As we all know, climate change is the worrying factor that we all are facing, and the consequences of it are frightening, right? So, in this scenario, biofuel gets attention. So, the hype is about the utility of biofuel, how it is used, and what is the significance of it. And having said this, let us move on to the categorization of biofuel into four generations. We are going to see them one by one. the first generation biofuel they are usually obtained from the wasted food crops like broken rice the shell of rice and sugar beet etc see they are generally blended with the fossil fuels to reduce the amount of greenhouse gases when the fuel gets burnt so what is the first generation is about it is obtained from wasted food crops and it is blended with the conventional fossil fuels Now moving on to the second generation these biofuels they are produced from non food crops see these type of biofuels include inedible energy crops which emits carbon dioxide lesser than the first generation biofuel now moving on to the third generation see these biofuels are those which emit the same amount of carbon dioxide as it has absorbed during its growth So what is happening here no extra carbon dioxide is emitted into the atmosphere so third generation biofuels can be called as carbon neutral why it is called like this since it emits the same amount of carbon dioxide what has been absorbed during its growth it is called as carbon neutral see one crucial fact that you have to know here is that the third generation biofuel derived from the algal biomass have been considered as the best alternative bio resource that avoids the disadvantages of first and second generation biofuels now moving on to the final generation which is the fourth generation of biofuels these biofuels are produced from genetically engineered organisms 
See, these generation of biofuels are carbon negative. Don't get confused here. Carbon negative means they sequester. That means they absorb more carbon when compared to what they are emitting. So, what does this mean? They absorb more carbon while growing than they emit during the burning. Now, you may say that this generation of, that is the fourth generation of biofuel is the most beneficial one. And you all will be eager to use it, right? But it is not in the conventional use. Researchers have been going on to bring the fourth generation biofuel to conventional use. One of the examples of fourth generation biofuel is the fuel produced from genetically modified cyanobacteria. And this is all with respect to the different generations of biofuel. And with this, we have also come to the end of this particular article discussion. And at this article discussion, we saw what is biofuel and what is its significance and the categorization of biofuel based on generations. With these key learned points, let us move on to the next part of the discussion that is the practice prelims question discussion. Today we have two prelims question for discussion. I will solve one of them and one of them is a quiz question for you. With reference to Ekleiva model residential schools, consider the following statements. Statement 1. It functions under the Ministry of Education. See, this statement is incorrect. Why is this statement incorrect? Because in our discussion we saw that these schools, they are functioning under the Ministry of Tribal Affairs. Now coming to statement 2, non-tribal students can also get admission in Ekleiva schools. See this statement, it is correct. Apart from scheduled tribes, other students can take admission in Ekleiva model residential schools. See 10% of the seats of Ekleiva schools can be filled up by non-ST candidates. Here, priority shall be given to children of the Ekleiva school staff and children who have lost their parents to the left-wing extremism and insurgencies and children of widows were also given priority. So, what is the correct answer to this question? The correct answer is option B, two only. Now, moving on to the next question. With respect to biofuel, consider the following statements. See, this is the quiz question for you. Read the statements carefully. Try to attempt this question and post your answer in the comment section. I have displayed a mains question here for your practice. So, interested aspirants, write it and post your answer in the comment section. And with this, we have come to the end of the video. If you find the video useful, like, share and comment and do subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy's YouTube channel for further updates. Thank you.